okay, we have this function and we want to find the inflection points. So remember to find the inflection points, you want to find the second derivative. So how do you find the second derivative? You find the first derivative first. So bringing the 4 down, 4x cubed, this is just using the power rule, plus 3x squared minus 2 times 3, 6x to the first power, and then the 3 goes away. But don't forget, we need the second derivative. So the second derivative, 12x squared plus 6x minus 6. All right, so to find inflection points, you set the second derivative equal to 0, and then you solve for x. So 0 equals, I already see here that I'm going to factor out a 6, so let's go ahead and do it now, which leaves me with 2x plus x minus 1. All right, so the only factor that I care about that I set equal to 0 is what's in parentheses. Oops, I put a, forgot my square there. Is what's in parentheses because this doesn't have an actual x on it. So now I either have to figure out can I factor this and it's like, yeah. Or I remember that we have that lovely little quadratic formula. So if you remember, the quadratic formula says that this is A, this is B, and this is C. So my A being 2, my B being 1, and my C being negative 1. So quadratic formula minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4A, oops, I put A, <laughs> a C all divided by 2A. Alright, so in the parentheses, this is going to be uh, negative 4 times negative 2, negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 1, positive 8, plus 1, 9, square root 3. So I get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 9, which is 3, over, I did the same thing on the bottom, 2a, which is times 2, and I get 4. So now I have to solve this for the plus and for the minus. So negative 1 minus 3, negative 1 minus 3, negative 4, over 4, so negative 1 negative 1 plus 3, or 3 minus 1, 2 over 4, and I get a half, or 0 0.5. All right, so these are, this is the key. These are possible inflection points, and that is key. They, they are not necessarily 100% inflection points. What you have to do is then, I set up a number line and I put my inflection points here. So you can see them there. And then you pick values in between to plug into your second derivative. So in other words, I might plug in negative 2 here. Here I'm going to plug in 0. And then here I'm going to plug in 1. All right. And the key is, does the sign change when you plug these values in? So again, I'm plugging these into my second derivative. When you do that, you will see that you will get positive. If you plug in 0, you can see you're going to get negative 6, a negative. When you plug in 1, you'll see you get a positive. And because the signs changed from positive to negative, changed, negative to positive changed, then that 100% means that those are your inflection points. But don't forget this part because sometimes this won't change and if it doesn't, then it is not an inflection point. And that's it.